This video is sponsored by Grammarly. Over 80% of you watching this video still haven't subscribed. Consider joining the people of the internet army and be among the first 100,000 subscribers. M1 iPad Pro with a new 12.9 inch mini LED display, a new magic keyboard with a trackpad, and a newly introduced feature called Center Stage. Now even though we now have support for Thunderbolt 3, an ultra fast 5G experience, and the ability for your M1 chip to equip up to 16GB of RAM, the question here is, can this be your MacBook replacement? People of the internet, my name is Andres, and we are going to explore if this new M1 iPad is worth it for you. At its core, we've got a dream screen. The mini LED screen is not like OLED where each pixel is its own light source causing it to produce perfect blacks, but instead we can think of it as LCD and OLED having a child. Apple introduced mini LED which includes thousands of tiny LED backlights grouped together to produce deeper blacks, improved contrast ratios, and brighter panels. In other words, this liquid retina XDR display only available on the 12.9 inch iPad delivers insane picture quality. Quality. This does deliver a great media consumption experience, especially when consuming HDR content. But with this 120Hz screen, with 1000 nits of full screen brightness and 1600 nits of peak brightness, in person, you can definitely notice the difference compared to previous Pro models, mostly within the darker areas. This new M1 iPad still delivers this beautiful flat design with square edges, slightly thicker at 0.25 inches and heavier at 1.51 pounds compared to the 20. 18 model, and along the space gray or silver aluminum material, you will find a beautiful back camera, and along the front, a newly improved 12 megapixel camera with a greater field of view. Below it all, a Thunderbolt USB 4 port will be found, supporting your 20 watt charging brick, display port to connect up to a 6K display, Thunderbolt 3 up to 40 gigabytes per second, and second gen USB 3.1 up to 10 gigabytes per second. Beside this new Thunderbolt, a set of speakers reside. And because we're talking Pro model, on its top frame, you will also find these acoustically pleasing speakers to deliver an immersive experience. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, we're not having this conversation. You're not coming. There are two kids whose mother is lost in there. Two kids that I help look out for. So yes, the same old 4 speaker audio, a multi-touch pen that still charges magnetically on its side frame, but a new magic keyboard. 
now delivered in two colors. The new Magic Keyboard delivers compatibility with the previous models and the trackpad will also work as long as you have iPadOS installed. You can also expect to use your new iPad Pro with your old Magic Keyboard as well. This keyboard features backlit keys, a scissor mechanism with 1mm travel that feels like your MacBook, and the trackpad which delivers multi-touch gestures and controls the cursor in iPadOS, which by the way it's extremely sensitive to the touch and and very easy to click on. It's aesthetically pleasing, protects your iPad all around, delivers good adjustability angles for a better view, and has a USB-C port for solely charging the iPad, leaving the other USB-C port on the iPad itself open for anything else. But my only concern is, how well will this white cover age? But for a device that has a starting price of $1,099, a $349 Magic Keyboard, and a $129 Apple Pencil to be complete, can this truly beat the MacBook Air offered at a more affordable price? Well, performance-wise, it depends. Yes, we now have center stage, which is a feature that tracks your face, and the M1 Neural Engine handles it very well. With this new wider lens and more megapixels, it allows the iPad to crop the image and work with the rest of the available area to track you. This inevitably provides a much better experience in video conferencing apps such as Zoom and FaceTime, and I find it super awesome how it is able to track two faces at the same time. But personally, I think of the iPad as a niche tool and a productivity device which allows me to type away. With a free digitally writing assistant like Grammarly, you can easily download the browser extension or iPadOS app to integrate it into your daily life. Grammarly has a free version with basic and grammar spelling suggestions, but upgrading to Grammarly Premium will save you so much more time with your advanced features so you can feel confident your writing is professional and compelling. So instead of spending time trying to find synonyms to avoid repetition, you can use Grammarly Premium's vocabulary suggestions to find a new and exciting words to make your writing more compelling. On top of that, you can avoid text redundancies with their premium scholarly suggestions which will save you time proofreading and meeting the word count for your essays and if you are a current graduate writing essays like I am do yourselves a favor and try their plagiarism detector only available on the Grammarly editor to double check your work across 16 billion other web pages and avoid plagiarism with my own personal iPad I find myself writing compelling scripts and correct my Instagram captions with the help of Grammarly and their mobile app the Grammarly keyboard as previously mentioned on my what's on my Mac video I heavily rely on their assistant to give me an overall score of how the text performs and receive feedback from it. So save time on your assignments and essays with Grammarly and go to grammarly.com slash Vidoza to sign up for a free account and get 20% off Grammarly Premium today to help you save time and work more efficiently. Now, obviously the iPad is a great tool for school and productivity. In fact, during my computer science degree, I heavily relied on a note-taking app such as Notability and GoodNotes to write personal school notes. Double tapping on the pen allows you to easily erase things and because you have a 120 hertz refresh rate, drawing is smooth and responsive. But having a pro model for productivity and schoolwork can be overkill. Yes, you can easily sign PDFs with an app like Notability, multitask with apps like Word and Safari to write your own essays, you can even slide a movie in while you're doing brainless tasks and it'll handle it very well, but the true performance lies beneath pro apps such as Lightroom, Photoshop, LumaFusion, and not to forget the new Thunderbolt port which allows the M1 to truly kick in. Connecting an SSD and searching for your footage through the Files app is easy. You can always import this and edit your clips on LumaFusion, which by the way seems to perform very well. Scrolling through the timeline with my 4K HLG footage was smooth, playback showed no issues, but I do have to admit importing multiple files took quite some time. All of my footage was shot on a flat profile which means that it needs color grading and LumaFusion doesn't seem to struggle with any of it. In fact, it was super easy to tweak things and still being able to run my clips to examine my color grade. And because the M1 is powerful, it was extremely impressive to see how it handles multitasking with such a complex application. But do keep in mind you can only run one clip at a time which is not very useful when you're trying to follow tutorials. 
Photoshop and Lightroom are a go-to for a device like this. If you are a photographer, it allows you to edit your pictures extremely well. It feels exactly the same as the previous years. You can use Lightroom to pretty much do all of the work you were to do on a Mac, and you even have the ability to quickly send this to Photoshop. Whether you're editing your thumbnails for YouTube or Instagram posts, you can easily use tools such as the Spot Healing tool, the Clone Stamp, and even Add Text, but you will lack a lot of the features that the PC version has to offers so keep that in mind. That being said, it makes up in other areas such as responsiveness and your interaction when designing. Now, Thunderbolt 3 does make reading and writing files a lot faster for these type of apps, but it also allows you to connect it up to a 6K screen. It's not as workable as I would have loved it to be since it simply mirrors your screen, but it's definitely awesome to see Apple moving towards this direction. Otherwise, it's cool to see that we now have the same RAM availability as in the MacBooks. This comfortably allows me to leave LumaFusion running in the background while I'm doing other tasks and return to it later. The reality of things is that this device is still very limited almost niche I would say, mostly aim at creatives within the graphic design industry and the music industry such as Henry the business. So iPadOS is still very limited and it doesn't allow the M1 to truly flourish. In fact, without a proper files management and the ability to have full desktop apps, I don't think this could ever replace the MacBook and I also don't think that is what Apple are looking for. For this particular device, the real upgrade is the screen. I wish we did have an escape key and a fingerprint touch ID on the power button like on the iPad Air, but I think that's just me being picky. Although the mini LED has been set to cost display blooming, it isn't something I have experienced yet myself. Overall, the matter of the fact is that there's so much power in such a thin aluminum chassis that it makes us wonder are we going to see something new for iPadOS on June 7th. The older chips were already delivering great performance so why are we getting M1 on iPads now? As much as I would have loved to recommend this to the average user, at the time of this recording, you are better off getting a base model MacBook Air and complement that with an iPad A for productivity and school purposes. People of the internet, if you've enjoyed this review, comment hashtag WWDC. I'm hoping to see some crazy upgrades on June 7th and hopefully can even get a proper code editor in there as well. I need to go, I have a budget friendly gaming laptop to review. Stay tuned, stay safe and take care. Don't forget to go to Grammarly.com slash Andres Vidoza to sign up for a free account and get 20% off Grammarly Premium today. Enjoy.